Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Now, I think we can all agree, sim racing is amazing. Especially when you jump into an online race and you find yourself with like-minded drivers who want to race clean, hard and fair. But one of the most challenging things in sim racing, or probably any motorsport for that matter, is keeping the gap to the guy in front as close as you possibly can without hitting them. By keeping the gap as close as you can means that you can literally take your foot off the gas. You don't have to push at 100%. But it also means if the guy in front can only see you in his mirror, he's more likely to make a mistake. So in this video, I'm going to give you a couple of tips how to race close and how to keep that gap to the guy in front to a minimum. Now, I had an absolutely epic race at Alton Park in the Global Mazda MX-5. If it works, you should see it up here somewhere, where for 10 laps, we were wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing really, really close. And I think this demonstrates what I'm trying to talk about. And if you stick around to the end of the video, well, I'm going to talk about how I could fashion or just about fashion an overtake on a 9,000 I rating driver. And I could only do that because I was following closely. So the first thing you need to consider when you're racing somebody closely, or if you think you're going to race somebody closely, is know the driver. Who are they? Have you raced them before? Do you know what their traits are? Do they race clean? Or are they known for being a little bit feisty? So if you've raced somebody before in a league, for example, and you know how they drive, great. But what if you don't? What if you're racing somebody for the first time? Well, the first thing that I always do when I enter a race, when I'm entering into battle, is look at my race lab overlay. Now, you don't have to use race lab. You can use any other overlays. Any overlay that tells you the driver's safety rating that's in the race. Now, as you can see by the screenshot, the guys that I was racing with in this race, well, they were both 4.9 on a B license. Now, 4.9 is the highest safety rating you can get. You can get an A license, but 4.9 tells me that that driver is safe. If you're in a B license or C license and you are 4.9, well, it just means that you don't race the class of license that you currently are. Because if these other two drivers drove the GT3s, for example, which is a B license, well, they would be promoted. So A, B, C, D, whatever it is, if somebody's got a safety racing of 4.9, well, to me, I'm pretty happy racing door to door. But what if you'd never raced that person before? And what if you don't have any overlays on? Well, you've just got to test the water. Now, I raced these guys for a few laps before we got really close. But as soon as we did, it was clear to me that Dominic was quite happy sitting behind me initially. It could have gone for a move up the long straight into the fast left-hander, but he didn't. He sat behind me and he'd followed me for a few corners prior to that, which showed me that he was safe and he wasn't going to run into the back of me. Same with the other guy. He was racing close behind Dominic, so it was clear that the three of us were pretty safe. So all you've got to do is test the water. Put your car in a position as if you're going to overtake and see what the driver in front does. If he pulls off a late defensive move, well, he's going to do it next time as well. So you might have to come up with another strategy. So that's tip number one. Know the guys that you're racing with. Now, tip number two is all about braking and specifically your braking. If you're the following car, you've always got to brake no later, no later than the guy in front if you're racing super close. Because chances are the guy in front of you is on the limit. He wants to get away from you. He wants to do all he can to get you out of his draft. So he's going to break really late. You can't break later than him. Or you can if, you're, if there's a little bit of a gap. You've always got to leave yourself a reactionary gap. Now, if you watch this short clip, you'll see as we go around the lap, pretty much every single corner, I'm breaking before the guy in front. That gives me a reactionary gap. It's much easier for me to just let off the brakes if I need to and close the gap. Rather than find myself in a position where I'm breaking, I'm 100%, I've got nowhere to go, and I'm closing on the guy in front. There's nothing worse in sim racing, knowing that you're doing all you can 
to get the car to stop, but it ain't stopping. But by leaving yourself a reactionary gap means that you don't have to push as hard. And you can think about your line through the turn. You can save tires. You can save fuel. You can also think about the exit, which is where there's a good chance you're going to get your overtake done or at least get an overtake set up. So that's tip number two. Break before the guy in front. It's much better to leave yourself a little wiggle room on entry rather than find yourself in a position where it's like, oh my God, I'm going to kill this guy. Now, tip number three is all about leaving space. Now, sometimes by leaving space, you're going to get overtaken. That's just the way it goes. That is racing, but you've got to leave the space. If you leave the space for somebody early on in the race, well, there's a good chance that later on, if you go for an overtake, they'll do exactly the same. But if you didn't leave space, squeeze them off track, well, that's coming right back at you. So they're my three tips for close racing. Number one, know who you're racing against. Either check out their safety ratings on the overlay. You might have raced them before. And if you haven't raced them before, well, take a few laps just to see how they drive before you actually commit to a move. Secondly, braking. Make sure you brake before the guy in front. If needs be, release the brake a little bit to close the gap, but don't find yourself in a position where you've got nowhere to go, literally. And lastly, leave the space. That will be reciprocated nine times out of ten. Now, I'm going to show you some clips of the race that I did at Alton Park. And if I wasn't following closely, I wouldn't have been able to attempt these overtakes. But by following closely and thinking about my exit, which is where the overtake was set up, meant that I was in a position to overtake. Now, the first one we're going to look at is a failed overtake, but it shows how I put myself in a position. So by following close, I was able to think about the exit out of this chicane, which puts me in a really good position going up the hill. Now, at this point, I'm not thinking of going for an overtake. Yes, I could have dove it in deep and gone too wide through the chicane. But all I'm thinking about is my exit. You can see his line's compromised. He goes in really deep. But we get a really good exit. And before you know it, peekaboo, I'm up the inside, putting myself in a really good position. Now, to be fair, I should have got the overtake done at this point. It should have been done, cut and dried. But I touched the first curb which compromises my line through here. He's always going to carry a little bit more speed because he's on the outside. You can see I touched the curb there and that's the drive gone, really. Now, a couple of laps later, we find ourselves in this position and again, it's all about the exit of this right turn here. Now, you'll see when I actually get the overtake done. So that's when the move started. That's when I started to set up the overtake, which put me too wide around is it Druids I want to think? I think it's Druids. But I get a better line through here this time. Get on the gas nice and early. We're still too wide as we go down towards the last right. So just remember where I started the overtake. So we go too wide through this tight right hand. And it pinches me right in here. But we'll both get a decent exit, which means we're still too wide. Now, he uses his off-track here on this right-hander. He runs a little bit wide. This is the last lap. I would expect him to do so. But I leave him room on the outside. We've still got plenty of room to go through there. But because he's got a better run, well, he's, he's in front of me there. But he still takes a defensive line. So I think about getting a good exit. And as you can see there, I slingshot behind him and put myself in a position to overtake. Now, he's holding the inside line for the carousel here. So he's outside here. He's thinking about the carousel, but we get the overtake done here. We should have dropped down, but we didn't. We took a high line, got on the gas too early, and that was it. The battle was over. So hopefully this video has been of some use. It's probably not how I imagine the video to be, but hopefully you get the idea of what I'm trying to say. You need to know how safe the other guys are in your race before you start racing door to door. You can look at their safety racing if you've got an overlay like what I'm using. You might know them from league racing or previous races in that series. But if not, then you're just going to have to just let the dust settle first few laps 
see how it pans out and see what their racing's like. We've talked about leaving space and the importance of that. If you don't leave the space, well, nobody's going to leave it for you. So whatever you do is going to be reciprocated nine times out of ten. And we've talked about how following closely means that you can literally take your foot off the gas, race at maybe 90%, think about your racing line, think about saving your tyres, think about saving fuel, and think about corner exit. And we've demonstrated by doing so, getting a good exit out of the corner, well, it can put you in a position to overtake. If the guy in front, if his line is compromised, well, he can't get on the gas as early as he normally would. But if you're following, thinking about your racing line, well, you can do what you would normally do, which means you'll get a much better exit. When I'm racing, all I want the guy in front to be doing is looking in his mirror. I want that guy to have a miserable experience. Not because he's worried that I'm going to punt him, but I want him to wonder where I'm going to make my move. Thanks for watching. Have a great week. See you later. Cheers.